Walmart. They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be brighter days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you steam. It's Willard and Dibs. <laughs> On 95.7, the game. We got a problem. I mean, it's 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 Monday. We're just getting started, but uh, but we got a problem. Um, and I wonder if you know what that problem is. I actually have two problems, but I'm going to hold one of them. At least you don't have 99 I'm, problems. I, no, I only got two problems. And a wish ain't one. And one of them, one, I want to thank uh, the great... Uh, Whitey Gleason yes. for, uh, for yeah. coming in here on uh, on Friday and allowing me to be with my pops for his 80th birthday. We shouted him out a few times. Yeah, we had way too much wine, uh, way too many back spasms, uh, way too many migraine headaches, Man. way too much Italian food. All of the things that you're supposed to do exactly. when you go away for a long weekend. I broke so, my back. Yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you to Whitey, and uh, and it's great to have Spadone back. Let's welcome Spadone back into the family um, as uh, as he makes his triumphant return to the office. Thank you very much. Uh, exactly. Let's go. Let's go. The whole thing is just going to sound better uh, with Spadone back in the fold here at 95.7 The Game. So uh, so welcome back there. Um, but I, I did have one problem with something that you guys did on Friday. But I'm going to hold that for just a second. Oh, you're going to tease right. it? Yeah, I got a big problem. You mentioned it in the green room, and yep. I've been racking my brain thinking... Got a problem. Did I take... Well, I'm sure I took a shot at you because you know... <laughs> oh, it's no, kind of no. what I do. No, I got a thick skin. It's nothing like that. Okay, you good. Can, you can... Man, when I'm not here, oh. I don't know if you hear what we do to you holy hell you could just i, I tune mean, in occasionally yeah, guns are blazing you I can do whatever in. you want and i don't have a thick skin so um, it, <laughs> i got that tissue paper skin <laughs> so uh no i'll hold that for for just a second okay. we'll address it in a moment i want to make sure that i nervous uh, i get my words uh together but okay. but anyway 888-957-9570 our number xfinity mobile text line as well and good morning twitch and youtube audience we thank you as always for being there really really appreciate it you can watch along as i blow dibs up here in about 10 minutes but <laughs> that's a tease uh, but anyway no the problem i wonder if everybody have noticed and and we'll get to the warriors and and their matchup with the kings tonight which i think is a really good get right game as the uh as bonte and joe said earlier yes baseball free agency is here uh there's an otani package that has been thrown out it's just bags uh, doing something, uh, all of the teams that might be in on an Otani trade. So there's all kinds of stuff for us to get to. And Softy Mahler from Seattle is going to join us. One of the best and, and most fun radio guests out there is going to join us in 25 minutes. And that is a clue into what the 49ers' new problem is. The problem is, is this Seattle Seahawks team is not going away. And I wonder if we've gone a little deeper into what we have here. A team that has now won four football games in a row. They are now 6-3. and three. And I wonder if you've looked at the next month of Seattle Seahawk football. And it is this. They will be the favorite, followed by being the favorite. Oh. Followed by being the favorite. Followed by being the favorite. And then they'll host the 49ers. On a Thursday night, get your Amazon Prime now yeah. and get ready for December 15th. But between now and then... They're favored in all four, you think? Well, listen, we never know what's going to happen. Is Geno Smith going to get hurt next week? True. A anything could happen. And we but know favorites don't always win. Well, Shout I out mean, to J-E-T-S, clearly, Jets, Jets, Jets. Clearly. And a nice uh, outright win with a double-digit underdog yesterday. I'd bet against it because of what you're saying, which is that favorites get beat all the time. This is the NFL. There's a ton of parody. I get it. But plausible that when the 49ers get to Seattle that the Seahawks are 10 and 3 next week in Germany against Tampa Bay and the Bucks who still stink don't get That's lost That's a weird one. Don't get Don't get lost in the names. It, don't get lost in the five in that, Godwin, Brady, well, Fournette. And the and the drive that they had with 50 seconds to go. They were terrible again 
absolutely play their games in honey. The the Rams and the Bucks are in slow motion. It's bizarre. I don't First know. place, Tampa Bay. <laughs> Thanks. Four You're and five. Welcome. Anyway, anyway, Spadone knows damn well what happens the week after that. Oh, no. The Seahawks the will be hosting your Las Vegas Raiders. Probably be favored by four and a half or five in at, that one. At least right now. The way that's going, they might be favored by a touchdown. Then they go to SoFi to take on the Rams. They also play in Molasses. Followed by a home date with the Carolina Panthers. My Carolina Panthers. That's the Seattle Seahawks schedule. And understand what the Seahawks hold, which is the power to turn the 49ers into sort of a one-journey team. And so everything not Seahawks-related went really well for the 49ers yesterday. Packers lost. Rams lost. That's all wonderful. If we give those three teams in the East playoff spots, we give the Vikings their division, uh, we give someone the uh, the division there in the uh, Tampa Bay in or the Atlanta. NFC South, right? Um, Atlanta lost. That was good for the 49ers. Yeah. All of that's good. But if Seattle doesn't slow the bleep down, then the 49ers are on a journey to get that last wild card spot. And all of a sudden, it felt like when they beat the Rams, you now look at the second half of the season. Let's look at the remaining nine games for the 49ers. Look. They're going to be favored in most of them. They've got McCaffrey now. They're going to get healthy, and it is time for a run. And, oh, by the way, it's the NFC. They really only probably need to go 9-8, and and they're going to be fine. Are we sure? The Seahawks are creating an urgency for the 49ers that I don't think even as recently as a week and a half ago we knew existed because they were about to play the New York Giants, a good team, and they were about to go on the road to the Cardinals as an underdog. They won them both. They won them both by double digits, and they won't go away. They won't, and I think those Tampa Bay games, and I say games because both teams play Tampa Bay before they play each other. That will be the interesting sort of head-to-head matchup before the Niners and Seattle play on a short week. The good news for the Niners is they have a home game against Tampa before they go to Seattle for that Thursday game. So at least they're at home, and by the way, they're at home for three straight. So for the Niners, it's Home to the Chargers, the only road game in their next five, because Seattle has a bye between now and the time those two teams meet. They go to Mexico City, and then New Orleans, Miami, and Tampa Bay, all at home. So if you're the Niners and you can fashion a 4-1 and one stretch, you find yourself 8-5 and five going into that Seattle game. And honestly, I'd be stunned if Seattle ran the table and won all their games. Seattle's more likely going to be 9-4, and four, Going into that game, so but still that's if, a but if you're one game back to record. Seattle and you beat Seattle in that game, you hold the tiebreaker. Yes, you hold the divisional tiebreaker. So I don't, I'm not as daunted as you are based on what's likely going to happen between now and mid December. Right, I, like you're right. They probably won't go four zero because if they do, that's an eight game win streak, and that just doesn't happen in the NFL, well, especially for a team that's not a juggernaut like this. Right, but listen to the expectation that you just hung on the 49ers, and that's my larger point right now. They had one good game with Christian McCaffrey against a team they always beat. Who, by the way, watch them play. They're broken. They stink. They're broken. The yeah. Rams stink. So now, because the 49ers can beat the Rams, and because they have Christian McCaffrey, and because we feel like coming out of the bye, they'll be blessed with health. The expectations are that the 49ers are about to go on this run. And I actually don't know if we have the full evidence that that's about to happen. And the expectations are not just ours, it's not just the 49er fan base. They are a touchdown favorite over Justin Herbert and the San Diego Chargers. Right, Super for Chargers. Sunday night football this weekend. And I get it. I get it. The 49ers are better than the Chargers. The Chargers are kind of disappointing, too, even though they're 5-3. and three. But this is a team with a winning record. And we forget your 49ers, who you are now expecting to just start winning maybe four of the next five without problems, it's the same team that's lost to the Bears, has lost to the Broncos, has lost to the Falcons this year. Great. They can beat the Rams. They can beat the Rams. They are beating the NFC West. Outside of that, 
I, I, I hope the acquisition of Christian McCaffrey makes them this different. It looked like that for one week. Well, I think they're a lot different getting Debo back and getting other players back as well. We so, would think. Yes, and this team last year, we know they were 3-5, and five and they went on a run in the second half. This team feels like it's poised to make a similar run. And if you look at the Niners' next five opponents, the Chargers have been disappointing. It's a home game. Arizona stinks more than the Rams stink, in my opinion. They could have a stink off, and they will play each other, and we can decide who's worst. Uh, worse among those two. But we know the Niners have had trouble with that matchup. Yes, we we know that. But this Arizona team, it feels like Kingsbury's the next coach to get fired. Frank Reich, by the way, has been let go. Just got to let go. Coach number two. Uh, New Orleans is not very good. I don't care who their quarterback is, redheaded pistol, or if they go back to Jameis Winston. Miami's the interesting one. Oh, my gosh. Because Miami is Miami's a good, good offense. Their defense has not been that great. And then Tampa Bay, we mentioned it before. Who knows what Tampa's going to be come December 11th. But I think the, the Niners schedule, we looked at this before as more of a gauntlet than it is right now. It's funny, when we look at the second half of the season, that game you just brought up, I mean, when we looked at the schedule, you remember when schedule release day in the NFL, and we were like, man, look at the teams that are coming Out of to the bye, Levi's. Yeah. Well, and to Levi's this year, you have the division teams, which are all <clears throat> sort of bring their own intrigue, but Patrick Mahomes was coming, Tom Brady was coming, um, all of these teams are coming into Levi's. Justin Herbert is coming. What's the game you're looking forward to the most? Miami is bringing the entire 2019 49ers backfield to Levi Stadium on December 4th <laughs> and their assistant coach. And Trent Shurfield. And Trent Shurfield <laughs> and River Craycraft. Right, they're thank you. all coming on December 4th, and they are fun. Is there any NFL team in a year where points are down and parity is up? Is a Dolphins game right now not the most consistently fun thing to watch in the NFL? It's up there. Right or wrong? No, it's. I would say that that team and uh, quietly Detroit's pretty fun to watch they because are, but it's just not very good. They're like, not great, they're, right. but a nice win yesterday for Detroit. Kansas City's right. traditionally a fun watch, and Buffalo. Yesterday's Buffalo game was also fun to watch. The, the Jets just they stuck it to them they, late in that the, game. The, the Jets don't tell them they're not good. They don't know. They don't know that they're not good Look and they at a don't nasty care. Defense. Well, Sauce Gardner's a star. Mm-hmm. If you want to have fun, and, and and I was talking to Ephraim about this last night. If you want to have fun, Whoop. you know how and I, I told him, I go, listen, you know there's certain things that we have in our life that we're like, you know what? If I never had that again, I'd be fine. Sushi. I, I'd be fine. Mono. I for mo- me. <laughs> back spasms. <laughs> exactly. Wait, fine. You, I, I have sushi every couple of weeks. <laughs> no. I would not be fine without sushi. And I know sushi. a lot of people are like that. I'm one of these people that I actually like so- sushi, but one of the things I have against it is I don't like it as much as other people. People's eyes roll back when they talk about sushi. I'm like, it's not that. It's For me, fine if you love sushi, but if I never had sushi again, I'd be okay. Pizza, just, if I had to choose between pizza and sushi, if, I'll, if I'll one take, of the, I, I would take pizza. I'll take the pizza. But sushi against like a, a sandwich, oh, I would take sushi over sandwiches. I'll take the sando. Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Sushi over like burritos. Oh my God. I would take sushi. I, I, I could do without I burritos. I would take burritos over everything. Over pizza? Burritos. Burritos over pizza? That's that's <laughs> like an not upset. on pizza. That's no, great. No, no. That's gross. Anyway, and maybe later in the bye week we can get into this a little bit deeper in terms of like <laughs> food up. stuffs Let's, rankings. Do like a in, food bracket. in March. We'll do a food bracket. It'll I love be it. it'll it'll be elite and it'll be all over social media. Thank you <laughs> Thank very you. much. Let's yeah, here comes back. Denver Claus. Um, <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, the things that if sauce it, sauce if, Gardner. If I never got him again, I'd be okay. Uh, thank you. Ready? Sorry. Ready? Yeah, tell me. Draft grades the day after the draft. If I never got him again, I gave him a C plus. Mark, I'm gonna be okay. I want you all fun exercise. Go look now. Now that we actually have real information, not Mel Kuyper's hair telling you that the Jets got a B minus. Now that we've got real information, go look at what the Jets did in the first 36 picks of this year's draft. I want you to look at what the Jets did. With the fourth pick, the Jets select Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati. Star. 
With tenth the pick? tenth pick, the Jets select Garrett Wilson from Ohio State University. Uh, Garrett Wilson of the Jets. I mean, so, of all the rookie receivers, he is right there with all of them in terms with of... With the 26th of the, pick. There we go. The Jets select Jermaine Johnson the second, Who had a sack yesterday against Buffalo, has struggled a little bit with injury, but... It's three first-rounders. When he's played, he's played very well. Why don't you dip into the beginning of the second round and take a with look at what the Jets... With the 36th pick, the Jets select, currently injured but dominant early, Brees Hall. Was going to be... Iowa an State. Absolute star however now tore his knee and so we won't see him until next year but that was four of the first 36 picks of the draft yeah it went home run triple double home run and you got robert sala who by the way we know he's salivating it, in those picks. i mean and in terms of culture like that's where you can really see the coaching sala mcdaniel they're both six and three they're crushing it man they're doing what they can do with the talent that they have. Robert Sala does not have a seasoned quarterback and big stuff going on on offense. So what do you do? Well, you get a running back who's going to really give you some stuff. They went and got James Robinson as soon as Brees Hall got hurt. You get stars on defense. You muck up a game, and you try to win 20-17. to That's exactly what they did to the best team in the NFL yesterday. I mean... I wonder what their draft grade was. I'm going to Google that during the break to see... Will you please? That you guys didn't get into this? No, I'm, I didn't. I'm sure me. they got some B-minus out want, there. I don't, like, I don't want draft grades today. Right. I want draft grades once the drafts start actually playing. Well, and the picks to start that playing. point, we go back to the 2019 draft because here on this very station, I know you were across the street at the time, but we did hour upon hour of Nick Bosa versus Quinn and Williams. Is it Quinn and Williams? Oh, I remember. Or is it Nick Bosa? And I was team Quinn and Williams. Were you? I was. I, I thought an interior, solid, three technique, a guy who could be a run stopper and also pressure the quarterback from the interior versus a guy who was maybe a little bit more of an injury concern out of Ohio State. Immediately, Nick Bosa pops. Quinn and Williams gets into a little trouble. He underwhelms, but now skip ahead to this year, Oof. and he's another piece of this nasty Jets defense. No, he's not a bad player by any stretch. I was no, he's team, a great yeah, player. Yeah, I now. was. Well, he ain't Nick Bosa. He ain't Nick Bosa. No, but he has closed the gap in yeah. terms of you know what the gap was after the first year. It was like I don't know if Quinn and Williams is going to survive in this league, and now you watch him play. And he's a big part of what they're doing in New York. Well, and believe it or not, too, while you watch what those two coaches are doing, because I know we've had a weekly, how likely is D'Amico Ryans to leave watch going with the San Francisco oh, he's 49ers? I, no, he's gone. He's gone <laughs> because people are looking at the, what's coming off of the Shanahan tree right now. Sala and McDaniel are both 6-3. and three. Both of them have switched cultures. Both of them have brought things to the table that those teams did not have before. And that's going to be, that's a thing. It, you know how it, it doesn't take much to be a thing. Remember for a while yeah. it was like, man, he once met Sean McVay. We should hire him. <laughs> like, right, you had to be 38 years old right. and have a clean haircut. That's how Cliff Kingsbury ended up in Arizona. We're like, I think he had lunch with McVay once. He's got a clean haircut. We should hire him. So I, this is a prediction now for the end of the year. Because I think the 49ers are going to play well in the second half, too. I think their defense is going to get healthy and play well again. And the Jets and Dolphins may both end up in the playoffs. And 49ers assistants are going to be a thing. People are going to want to grab what's coming out of this organization. Because quite frankly, these two teams that are grabbing assistance from the 49ers are playing better than the 49ers so far this year. Does Kingsbury coach... Two games against the 49ers this year. Yes. Over under on yes. a game and a half for Kingsbury against the Niners. Because the last I'll game the, over. the last game of the year is against Arizona and it, that's January 8th. January 8th. So a and we know that now. a lot of the firings happen either before week 18 or after week 18. If Arizona continues this downward trajectory, he might be gonzo before that game even happens. Softy Mahler at the top of the hour from Seattle. How big is the 49ers Seahawks problem? We'll get into that. Got some Warrior stuff in your phone calls coming into next hour as well. Going to go to the phones right now. But first this, uh, speaking of assistance or taking over in the coaching ranks, you mentioned the Colts firing Frank Reich. Guess who they are hiring as their interim head coach? This is off the board. This is interesting. They will go with... 
former six-time Pro Bowl center and ESPN analyst Orlovsky? Jeff no, Saturday, Saturday is their interim what? head coach. He's going to change his name to Jeff Sunday Should. just for this week. Uh, he's been a consultant for the team. He's in the ring of honor, was also a head coach. Uh, now, what is this at uh, the... Um, the Hebron Christian Academy football team in Georgia. So he has some head coaching experience in high at, school at the academy level. Uh, so he jumps to uh, the NFL. That's a big jump. That's a big jump. It's a big jump. But uh, <laughs> you know, as an interim, and I'm sure he will maintain the majority of the staff. And you come in with the team. By the way, you're not out of the the divisional race right now. You're just two back at Tennessee. With eight well, left to go. By the way, that was the weirdest. That's why this Ellinger thing was so weird. The Colts were 3-3-1 three, three and one, and were like a half game out of first place. And they're like, Matt Ryan's hurt, but we're actually not, we're, you're never going to see him again. And we have Nick Foles, but we're not doing that either. We're going with Sam Ellinger for the rest of the year. And didn't you think when you heard that, oh boy, he must be showing some stuff in practice. He must have some things that we don't know about. Have you watched them play the last two weeks? That was a tank job out of second place with a 500 record. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Ellinger doesn't, I mean, their offense stopped. It totally, it's worse. No, it's beyond bad. And, you know, it's not like Matt Ryan was terrible. He was a byproduct of a bad offense, though. It's not like the offense was humming and he was the reason why they were being held back. That offense across the board is bad. And, and Taylor's hurt. Taylor's been in and out of the lineup, their yeah. best player. Rich and Fremont here with Willard and Dibbs. Hey, Rich, what are you doing? Hey, I'm actually driving from Dublin. I had to go become a witness for a case. Can I get a witness? And, yeah, I'm listening to you guys. And you know, so I'm going to tell you something. You talk about teams that are fun to watch. Right now, I think the spiciest team that's fun to watch right now is the Jets. I mean, come on, man. That is a San Francisco 49 hybrid going on over there. And the way they're playing, dude, they beat the Bills. Come on, man. That, 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 that win is explosive. It, it really it, is. It depends on it, – Rich, it depends on what makes you tick. The, the the Jets are fun if you really get into defense and, and, and teams that win with special teams. Like Zach Wilson threw for 154 yards yesterday. So it's not an offense that's dynamic. It doesn't have a lot of playmakers, and their biggest playmaker tore his knee uh, a, a week and a half ago. So, I, But I get what you're saying. Like, If you like that style of football, then Robert Sala and the energy of the sideline and all of that is really fun. Okay, but this is the thing. You... Oh, uh, uh, something, something. We lost Rich there for a second. But thank yeah. you, Rich. I uh, appreciate the call. I like watching the Dolphins better. Than, than the Jets, personally. I like watching Buffalo more. I like watching Kansas City more. Well, I even meant, I meant Baltimore the, I meant the 49er more. assistant teams. I give a, gotcha. I'll take a Dolphin game over a Jet game. Sure, the yeah. Dolphins, especially when two is back and all the weapons they have, but without a doubt. The Jets are a fun watch because of the way they're going about it. They're playing with a purpose, and they're hearing all the chatter that they're not that good. And I wonder if Softy Mahler, when he joins us at the top of the hour, feels the same way about Seattle, because at what point do you start to look at Seattle and say, okay, you're for real. We believe in you now. Uh, it's all sponsored by Yes on Prop 31. It is Willard and Dibs on a Monday. We'll take your calls throughout the hour. we got plenty of Warriors stuff to get to. 888-957-9570. But Softy Mahler... Coming up next, how big is the 49ers-Seahawks problem?